Hey everyone, it's Paul here. How's it going? Um, okay, as promised, I have not only uh, gotten to the subscriber number that uh, we've been planning for this milestone, but, well, for some reason you guys have surpassed it. The numbers soared so dramatically fast um, that I, I was just racing to complete the shader. So, um, yeah, look, you can see here on the screen, there you can sort of check it out. See, it's 2024 as of right now. Sorry about this handheld business. Uh, we're going to get to the screen right now and uh, we're going to check out this uh, EV tune shader that I've got set up for you with a few little surprises. Uh, so without any further ado, uh, let's get on with that. So here we are in Blender and we're taking a look at a demo file. This is the file that is going to be available for you to download. I've got a render here and as you can see, there's some freestyle lines over the top. Now, the one caveat going in is because this is an Eevee shader, Freestyle doesn't work with Eevee. So the line work I've actually composited uh, separately. Okay, so this is what you would see if you do a straight render out of Eevee. In future releases of, of Blender 2.8, probably around Blender 2.81, there's going to be something called overrides, apparently. Um, and what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to set up uh, view layers or render layers uh, that utilize different engines. And so when that happens, uh, my really clunky setup over here is going to become obsolete and it'll be smooth sailing from there on in. Let's go into the uh, the 3D view and let's see what is in the demo file. Now I've got the pod that I released when I hit a thousand subscribers here on YouTube. And what you can see here is that I've got two cameras and I've got a couple of lamps here as well. These are spot lamps. Uh, let's take a look at the, the Toon Shader itself um, from the perspective of importing it into a new file. So here I have a fresh uh, Blender scene. You know, you open up Blender 2.80 and the, the, the version I'm currently using uh, is the beta and it was released on the 14th of December. So anything uh, more recent than that, everything should uh, go just fine. And so here we are, we've got our default cube, everything's on left click select. So let's go ahead and add our material. I'm gonna go file, append, and navigating to my file, I'm just gonna hit this Toon Shade EV to import that material. Clicking on the cube here, I'm going to select that material and uh, I'm going to go over to my rendered view and you can see that the settings from the file are this sort of pinkish color, but um, I'm going to sort of set up some different defaults um, soon enough. Now, I'm just going to edit this scene. I'm going to bring this up a notch. I'm going to add a ground plane. And what I might do is just move this box back, add couple more objects here. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to shift select all these objects, then the cube, and with control L, I'm going to give them all the same material so that we can see how the material affects uh, each uh, object. All right, so uh, let's bring this part of the window up and let's go over to our shader editor so that we can very quickly see what this shader does. All right, now remember when I mentioned the lights? Let's go ahead and change this point light to a spot lamp. I'll rotate this around. Uh, okay, so I've now got a lighting setup, okay? So all I really did was I bumped up the energy at about 250 because when you drop the energy, uh, it seems that the uh, it almost works like the limit of where that lamp actually falls is affected and so you want a good energy to actually uh, fill that area with light. Uh, now the spot shape is 75 degree angle, uh, we can make that more narrow, we can enlarge it even if we wanted to but 75 is a good range to play around with. The blend, check out what happens when we hit the blend, okay? We get this nice soft shadow here and uh, a couple of bandings which is really nice. And when we take a look at some of the uh, the settings here, you'll understand why that's happening. So I'm gonna leave that blend on so that we can play around now with the shader itself. So I'm gonna drop a couple of these uh, options down to what should be their defaults, okay? 
Um, so let's go through with it, uh, through it one by one. Now I've added something called shadow banding. And what this does is it basically gives us a delineation of how many levels of uh, tune shade we get. And so at one, we get a highlight and we get a shadow. And depending on your lighting, uh, this can uh, increase or decrease across the surface of your object. I've got a grow and shrink modifier here so that if I increase that, the level at which uh, the, the shadow passes over can be manipulated to a point. Okay, so I've done it just between zero and one because anything beyond that means that you really wanna shift the light around to fill those areas, okay? This just gives you a little bit of leeway so that if you're getting a lot of swimming shadows or it's too dark in some points, you can bump that up or drop that back and get a really nice, uh, you know, controlled shadow. So there's that control in there. Now, shadow softness is interesting. If I bump that up, okay, now you can actually get somewhere between very hard tune shadows and softer tune shadows. Someone was asking me about that. And so somewhere between that, you can actually get some really nice tune-like effects, but still have a little bit of softness, which is really nice. Okay, so next, let's bump this banding up a little bit. Let's go two. Uh, maybe even three, and you'll see that the banding uh, happens here, and then we can sort of grow or shrink that, and the banding uh, sort of grows and shrinks proportionally to that um, that growth and shrinking of the shadow itself. Okay. Now, this is the, the fun bit. This is the bit that I've sort of incorporated into the shader um, to give you a bit more control over colors. A lot of people try to color tune stuff using the lamps. While this makes a lot of sense from a physical perspective, um, it doesn't make a lot of sense from a comics perspective or a tune shading perspective. What you want is control over what colors the shadows are and what colors the highlights are. And in this light version, I've given you a couple of options. First off, we've got a mono color. We can click on that swatch and we can make this any color we want, okay? And what this does is it just gives you this monotone, uh, mon monochromatic color, which can then be desaturated so you can get some really nice highlights and then this filled colored shadow um, or some really dark shadows with the color filling in those lighter spots or just somewhere in between, which is really cool. I've got something else here. There is also the option to do, if I bump this all the way up to one, a duotone, which means that you can control the color of the highlight areas, so if we wanted, say, a light blue, separately from the shadow areas. So if I wanted a really nice dark purple or something like that, now shadows, okay, you can sort of see where this is going. But there's something else. You can actually mix between the mono and the duotone to get a lot of subtle effects. And so just like that shadow softness, okay, there, you can now mix between your mono color and your duo, like shadows and highlights, okay, for some really nice blending effects. That's about it for the shader, okay? So it's nice and concisely packaged. It works on Eevee. Now, how about those freestyle lines? This is a little bit of a surprise bonus, okay? So the demo file, let's go back there, okay? Um, has actually got a, a setup that I like to use, but it comes with a few caveats. I'm going to show you perhaps the only way to get a freestyle render over your EV shaders, and this utilizes scenes. What the demo file actually has, has got two scenes. It's got a main colors scene, which we'll, you're looking at here, and a line work scene, which I'm going to have to go into a solid mode here. Um, so that because the the EV shaders don't work in cycles, so we've set this to cycles. I've dropped my f uh, sampling rate down to something very very low. Um, I've enabled freestyle, um, and under film, this is the most important part. I've ticked transparency. Now I've made this layer, okay, uh, called it freestyle, and I've created a uh, a line set that uh, has a few tweaks to it that really gives you a nice uh, set of lines without too much fuss. 
Um, I've also noticed that freestyle renders a lot faster in 2.8 as well, just like Cycles does, so that's been given a bit of a boost. That's fantastic. All right, so all that I've done is created a separate scene with the linked objects, the cameras and the object. Now, I'm just gonna give you an overhead over here. Uh, we've got two cameras, uh, camera left and camera right. And I'm gonna be showing you what happens when you render from one of, one of each camera from your uh, colored file, okay? Because these cameras are linked in from your main colors one. You see that you've got a camera L and a camera R. So let's take a look through camera L. Control zero, it's a different angle. What you have to do is match the camera in your other scene. So here's what happens. If I go ahead and I hit render, F12, it will render both, but because we didn't update the camera in the line work, you're gonna get this. So what we have to do is to make sure that in line work, our camera L is what we've got selected. So if we go control zero, we've matched that. And then back in our main colors, we just click render on that line work layer. It will re-render the line work and composite it over your completed render. I've got my render layer for the main colors, that view layer, on this render layer's um, input. I've got this render layer input set to the other scene, okay? Line works with the layer called freestyle, okay? That renders out the line work. And they're just alphaed over, and then I've alphaed over again on a background plate. The EV shaders are light responsive, which means not only do they receive shadows, they also cast shadows. And that's why I've got this plane down here. You can see that the lamp is actually casting the shadow of the object. Okay, there's no fancy scripting with normals or normal maps. So if I rotate that, the shadow naturally reacts to the lamp, okay? And so these blasters here are casting shadows on the body of the pod, um, and you're getting all this lovely shading in there. Not to mention, I've got a second light here with some different settings that is casting sort of a, a more softer glow uh, on here which is really nice. And so you can get some soft shadows in there as well. So if we went back to our camera R, say, you can see sort of where those soft shadows fill in. So the demo file has got obviously this material, which you can append, all right? So the material is just called toonshade underscore EV. Um, or you can just import the node tree um, group called EV toonshade. And so you can apply it yourself just by going shift A, group EV Toon Shader, and that will bring in that shader group. Um, so there it is, guys. The download link is in the notes below the video. Um, thanks for getting me to this point on YouTube. Um, could have done it without you. It's really great that I'm getting a lot of interaction with you people. Um, I'm really enjoying the community tab. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, the community tab is something here on YouTube that uh, you can interact with me. I sometimes post uh, not videos, but just like pictures or, uh, or notes or something like that. They go up there um, and you can interact with me and even comment on those things. Uh, so yeah, download the file, have a play around with it. Um, put your feedback in the comments. Um, I can only uh, try to improve this and uh, hopefully we can find some new solutions uh, for line work in the future for, uh, for EV tune renders and stuff like that. All right, that's all from me, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, enjoy. Mm -hmm.